grotty day. We've um, we've had a, a surprising number of visitors to some of our chats, I think, and some some interesting ones to others. So we're quite excited this morning to share those with you. Going to see if we've got anybody else joining in the next minute or so. So just, Go on. just a reminder that we are recording this morning um, and also you're part of a larger audience and you can all see each other um, at different times if you've got your cameras on. Um, I see some haven't, I'm rather envious, I imagine you in, tea, in, in bed with a cup of tea, relaxing. Um, so if you would prefer to remain anonymous, please go into participant, click on yourself and you have the option of renaming. Um, so you can get rid of the name or put in a, a pseudonym in there. Um, also, if you would prefer not to be on the visual, on the recording, um, if you stop your video, then that way you won't be picked up at all. Most of the way through, we're going to be focusing in on our presenters and more importantly, the moths and the poetry and the artworks that we've got going on this morning. But occasionally we'll have a little zoom out and have um, lots of faces, lots of smiley faces this morning, which is really lovely. Um, again, we've got the chat function, so um, you're all muted throughout. If you've got any comments, um, any feedback, we'd love to hear where it is that you are um, joining us from um, and also any any comments on particular moths if you've got a favourite as we go through um, that would be great and I know that we've got some other keen moths in the audience so um, keep an eye in there because there will be questions from people like myself who are only just learning about moths um, if, you've, if you've got any comments to add in there that would be, would be fantastic um, and in as part of the chat function uh, oh, sorry, not as part of the chat function. Down at the bottom, you've also got reactions. So you've got a, a clapping hands and a thumbs up um, to be able to kind of comment on what's happening as the session goes on. Uh, I think that's everything. I'm going to pass over to our host for this morning, Naomi. Hi, welcome. Welcome to the morning session of Watch Moths. I hope you slept well last night and you're ready to see what the reveal shows us. I think we've got some lovely moths to see waiting for us. Um, there's, there's the same presenters as last night, but for a few of you who haven't uh, met everybody, and also there's a new presenter as well, I'll just quickly say hello to you. So Richard uh, Fox is, is waiting to show us his moths, um, but just, hi Richard. Hi there. Um, he's in the garden. There he is. And uh, Simon Bates is in the woods with his moth traps and sugared area. So, morning. Up. Morning. morning. Uh, there's Chloe and Jenny, both there that you've already met. Uh, and then there's Tom Bolton, who's a Plymouth poet, who has agreed to show us or, or let us show you his uh, poem that he's written in honour of Moths to a Flame. Hello jo hello, Tom. Hi, hello. Hi, nice to see you. Um, wait, where are you from Tom? Wait, where are you coming from this morning? Coming from Falmouth this morning. Oh, right, I love um, you. Yeah, and Dan who's uh, also worked with me on the project is away so I have him. Um, oh, right. wait. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. He's with us in spirit. Yeah, nice, nice to meet him. Uh, we've got John Walters as well. Um, hello, uh, John. Good morning. Okay. With your Nicotiana plant. Yeah, my tobacco flower. Yeah, the Nicotia smell. It doesn't smell so nice this time of day, but it, it sends its uh, puts its uh, scent out in the evening to attract the moths. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Um, and who else? We, we Sarah's come to join us. That showed us her lovely moth art last night but um she's sarah gillespie's here as well because she's a mother too hello sarah <laughs> she's she's there somewhere i'm sure anyway let's get on um we are basically this in the morning we have a fantastic reveal ahead from various places as I've already suggested, but also in Chloe's bathroom, and also Dave, um, Dave Neal with the flat pack moth trap from his moth trap as well. So uh, we've got lots of moths to actually see and talk about, and perhaps uh, we should start off by 
going to see one of them. Let's go over to Richard. Richard in his garden in Abbots Kurzweil. Hello, Hi, morning Richard again. Let's, let's have a look and see what you've found. Yeah, sure. So it wasn't a great night last night here. Far fewer moths than I'd normally hope to get this time of year uh, in my moth trap in my garden. But that was because of the wind and rain that, uh, that sort of plagued the night, really. But we'll have a quick look and um, hopefully we can show you a few things and talk about a few things of interest. So on the top of the moth trap here, this little moth, hopefully you can see there. Uh, that's a lime speck pug. So this is one of the, John mentioned yesterday in his artwork, a, a moth called Chinese character, which is a bird poo mimic. So it, its colors have evolved to look like bird poo to uh, prevent it being eaten by predators and very much the same strategy going on with that lime speck pug. And then, um, okay, yeah. So here we've got a very dull looking moth. I don't know if you can get in there, Jake, on that one. So that's a vines rustic and the interesting thing about that is that that's a colonizing species. It, um, it used to be earlier in the, in the 20th century, in the early part of the 20th century, it was only known as an immigrant arriving into Britain. Um, but from the sort of 1940s onwards, it colonized southern England and has continued to spread northwards ever since. So there's a lot of change going on with our moths. There's a nice brimstone on the other side of that. Uh, that nice lovely sulfur yellow moth, very common in the garden here. But what, does, what does the brimstone actually eat? eat oh, does it? That's a good question. I can't remember off the top of my head, sorry. <laughs> no, that's <all> right. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it sort of, uh, you know, it's ecosystem. It's Absolutely, like, yeah. I'll yeah. have to check on that and yeah, uh, wait, 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 wait my brain up. Um, <laughs> we have another nice one on here, uh, not unusual, but quite a funky moth is this spectacle. So I don't know whether you can see, but it's called the spectacle because on the front of its, its uh, sort of thorax there, there are two little circular marks which kind of look like it's wearing a big pair of spectacles. Can you yeah. see that at all? Yeah, yes, yeah, that's, that's great. So um, I did have a quick look through here earlier on and there wasn't a huge amount, but um, because the light attracts moths in, not all of them go into the moth trap and you get moths sitting around on the vegetation. And indeed over here, we can get Jake to do some mobile camera work, up on the window, of the house here is a lovely magpie moth. Oh yeah. So very distinctive, large moth, black and white with the yellow sort of markings on it, which is a nice thing to see. Mm. And then <laughs> I'll take you down quickly to the other moth trap. We put in what was hopefully going to be the sheltered corner of the garden. And um, again, I haven't, I haven't opened this one yet because on sitting on the outside of the trap here is a really pretty moth. Again, sort of black and white, a kind of monochrome theme coming through here this morning in the, uh, in the moth catch. This is a black arches and it, it's an oak feeder. I remember this one. Um, so it's caterpillars feed in, uh, in oak trees. We're lucky that our next door neighbours have, a, uh, have quite a big oak tree so that may have lived its early part of its life up there. But black arches is another moth that's doing interesting things. So many moths in Britain are declining. The total abundance of moths in Britain has decreased by almost a third since the late 1960s. So generally moths are in decline as, as we see for so much of our wildlife sadly. But black, black arches is one of the species that's doing really well and it's spreading northwards. It's quite common across the south of England and has been for, for you know, as, as long as we know. But um, in the Midlands and in the north of England, up through Yorkshire, this moth has expanded its range in response to climate change. So we have many species of moths and butterflies and other wildlife that are um, temperature dependent, if you like, and they have lived for many, many decades in the southern part of England but found northern, more northern and sometimes also more western parts of the UK too cold for them. 
and uh, obviously climate change is altering that as so many other things um, and um, this species black arches has been able to spread north and is now found lives right the way up through up into North Yorkshire and is continuing to expand its range. Interesting. So know, does that give you enough for now? Yes, yes, you could, you could lift the lid. Maybe. Can we have a look? Yeah. yeah. I don't, want to, I don't want to overstay my welcome on my first... No, you're uh, not overstaying your welcome. I'm, <laughs> I'm keeping an eye. It's quite damp. We'll see if we can get... I don't know whether it'll play ball, but this Black Arches has rather a nice... Oh, it's gone in. Okay, never mind. Well, have a quick look. It looks quite quiet. Oh, there's a pretty little micro moth in here. This is Pyrosta aurata, the mint moth. Maybe familiar to people from their gardens. Lives on their uh, mints. The caterpillars feed on mints and oregano and various other plants mm. in that sort of family. Let's see if I can reclaim our. Whoa, okay, there's another vines rustic here that I was talking about and a large yellow underwing just revving up. Oh, sorry, van going past next in the road next door. Large yellow underwing is one of our most abundant moths, but it seems to be, I would, I would be interested to see what the other mothers think. Um, seems to be having a really poor year this year. I've had really low numbers um, in my moth traps this summer. So hopefully that's not a sign of things to come. Generally, it's a moth that's done well in Britain over the last few decades. Um, and it's not uncommon to get 50, 60, 70 of them in a moth trap at this time of year. But um, I'm, I'm not seeing numbers, uh, you know, numbers anything like that. Uh, here's our dark, uh, our dark uh, black arches again. It's got its antennae out now. Mm, it's a beauty. Yeah. So uh, as you're probably aware, one of the sort of key ways to tell the difference between butterflies and moths is the shape of their antennae. Um, our butterflies tend to have club-shaped antennae, so they have a long sort of stalk with a knobbly bit on the end. Um, and most of our moths don't have that. They either have long, thin, tapering antennae that just taper to a point, or like this black arches, they have big, fluffy antennae. And th that featheriness is to uh, gives them a, a, a really good sense of smell, which it, they use to find food, but principally to find mates. So uh, because they're flying around at night, um, they use a lot of chemical signaling to find each other. Another, another large yellow underwing. Well, maybe this will be the night of the large yellow underwings after all. Yeah, and we have um, Sarah Gillespie said, saying that she's found fair numbers down near Dartmouth. Okay. So, and um, the book that we launched yesterday, The Moth's Whisper, that, that's about a yellow underwing. Yes, yes, so that's if, right. You know, if the numbers were low, that would be a shame for her. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't know whether you can see this. The contrast is probably not very good on the against the cardboard. You, this one on the top, Jack the plume. Can you see that? Yeah. 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 So there's a very strange-looking creature here. It's a. It is a moth. It's a plume moth, common plume, monodactyla, but it sits with its wings kind of rolled up, um, and its body sort of straight down to form this sort of T shape, uh, which is quite distinctive. And that, that's that's probably about it, actually. From yeah, this well, thanks, trap. Richard. It yeah. was worth. It was lovely. It's really exciting seeing them with you for the first time. It's it's nice to have a whole range. Sometimes a little film. Sometimes seeing them live, um, depending on the weather and the whole set of circumstances. But it's good. Thank you. Thanks okay. very much. And um, the brimstone. Simon said that's blackthorn and hawthorn. So you must have had that. You must got got that around the outside of your garden I'm, I'm uh, yeah um i've got some hawthorn in the garden there's a little hawthorn shrub just growing up behind uh, specifically yeah. with moths in mind but yeah. of course there's a huge amount of hawthorn uh, a huge amount of both actually blackthorn and hawthorn in all the lovely devon hedges uh, yeah. that we're, we're fortunate to still have in the countryside around here yeah yeah great well um so if people want to have more of more brimstones in their garden whatever get 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 a few Hawthorns planted um, somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Let's move on to Simon in the woods. 
Brilliant. Hello, Simon. Good you morning. Take, you know, we're, we are running a few minutes late, but just keep, okay. do what you need to do. Don't rush, it's, it's fine. Well, well, uh, Richard was nice and easily paced with his delivery, so I'll try and replicate that. Yeah. <laughs> um, on my own, unfortunately, today, so uh, oh. if the handling of the, the phone isn't brilliant. But uh, what I'll do is I'll, I will swing the camera around so you can see where I am. I'm in a friend's woodland uh, on the edge of Exeter and here's the trap and he's built himself a nice shed here it's um it's a bit of sort of what we call secondary woodland so uh, most of the trees are quite young there's a lot of ash in the woodland and i've put the trap right up some some nice ash trees here so it was quite sheltered here last night um which was to my benefit i guess um, as opposed to where Richard was um, and I've got some nice things to show you yeah some new things to me actually so the first thing I'd like to show is Richard was talking about butterfly and moths this is a moth but it's a very common day flying moth it's called the yellow shell and it's got yellow uh, forewings and yellow hind wings and some nice striping on it uh, so this this is this is one of the, the moths that sort of where there's a slight crossover with the butterflies given that it's a day flying a day flying so that's quite a nice one and so look out for that one that's very common and you'll see that flying around your garden at this time of the, of the year so two species now which are interesting and maybe uh, increasing because of climate change this is a rather gorgeous freshly emerged green carpet mm. that's show, showing well yes it is. No, it's, it's um it's really pretty um hopefully the focus is working all right there yeah. uh, so this is a moth that has two generations it has an earlier summer generation and this one as i say is freshly emerged so i think it's uh, the first of a second generation of, of adults and uh, um this second generation is tending to increase in size and so that might may well be due to uh, climate change um and then hopefully if it's still there something else that has a second generation this is clay triple lines and hopefully you can see that's a lovely sort of beachy color and this one feeds on beech leaves the caterpillars feed on beech leaves hopefully you can see the lines on that um, and as I say this has got two generations um, and uh, it is becoming more abundant in this second generation so two moths that might well be doing uh, population increasing on the back of climate change uh, what else have we got here we've got a very nice um, small phoenix and hopefully you can see can you see how the abdomen is actually stuck up at the rear um, yeah. So yeah you can you you are holding it so we can see that simon slightly curled up again this is a beautifully marked it's a very small moth but it's rather beautifully marked um with brown dark brown light brown blotches mm. uh what else have i got here um oh yeah yeah so there's our friend the black arches again oh yeah and then i'm rather pleased with this one so this is called a footman and there's several species of footmen um but they tend to be half the size of this one this is quite chunky you can compare it with the 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 black arches there so usually the, the footmen are about half the size of this beastie um this is a 
four spotted footmen. No spots on this one because this is a male. The spots are on the female. Um, and this is quite a nice record because I understand this is nationally scarce. Mm -hmm. um, yes, but there are some good populations down here in Devon. Um, so these footmen, uh, they feed on lichens, which is why most of them are half the size of this one. But apparently this one feeds on a lichen called dog lichen, which is a really sort of large leafy lichen that you find on oak trees. Um, and also you can find it on, you can find dog lichens on rocks as well. Find, find them a lot on Dartmoor, actually, those sorts of lichens, but it's a woodland species. So that's, I'm quite uh, pleased to get that one. There's actually been two in the trap, so. Yeah, great. And, uh, and Jenny, did you manage to get the, the film, Simon's film of the sugaring? That he I, I did indeed and we've also had if we may just jump across um, to Richard he's just spotted a Jersey Tiger on the lawn near his trap so Simon right. apologies for this but if, if we may just pause a minute and we will we'll shoot back across to Richard and then we'll come back with your video in a moment Hi there really sorry Simon to interrupt but having uh, having turned away from my moth trap I uh, immediately saw this sat on the lawn nearby. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah. That is a Jersey tiger. Now that's pretty much the, the uh, county moth of Devon, if, if Devon was to have such a thing. Um, because this species, it's a large, colourful species. I'll see if I can get it to fly and you'll see the colours on it. Or maybe it'll show us its hind wings. Like gently. <laughs> it's, no, it's really sleepy. There we go. You see a colour there. Um, so this moth, for, for many, many, many years, this moth was only known from Tor Bay. So back in the Victorian era, all the butterfly collectors and moth collectors would have to get the steam train down to Torquay to uh, come and get collect to come and collect this moth uh, for their collections. But in the last sort of few decades, again, it's a climate change thing. The moths really started to spread. Um, it spread across into Dorset and up through Somerset and separately it's become established in the London area. So nowadays people are seeing these uh, these moths in and around London and in the home counties and it's spreading like mad and doing really well. But really this is Devon, one of Devon's special moths and indeed is the emblem of the uh, of the Devon moth group. Anyway, I'll butt out and let, uh, let us get on with it. <laughs> Thanks Richard. So we've then we've got a, a video for Simon. Uh, so I'm going to share that one now. If you'd like to tell us a bit more about this this fella. Yeah. So basically, the um, my attempt at sugaring last night, which was quite successful, nothing um, rare, but uh, four different species on mm. the stripes that I painted on various trees here. We can't see it yet. No. Sorry, it is loading, but it's... Uh... Uh, so the video is... Well, oh, here we go. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about that, everybody. I'm going to give that another try. Zoom just did something very special that I've never had do before. <laughs> I thought I'd lost you entirely then. Let's try that again. Yes, there's some specific thing you want to tell us about, Simon. We shall move on to change from real live moths to uh, the poetry competition. Are you, are you okay? Is there anything you want to... Oh, it's fine. I mean, I've got other things to show people, but we can come back to it if we've got time. Okay, let's let's do that. Let's get on and um, welcome Tom and um, the poetry competition. And we'll come back to you if we've got time in, in, at the end. So, thanks, Simon. Uh, the, we've got this poetry competition as part of the Moths to a Flame project. and. Um, we are getting poems 
sent in to us with people who are inspired by the moths and or energy and um, Matt Harvey has written us a poem about the moths to a flame it's called moths to a flame and we have the video of that on on our website but the whole project um, has inspired Tom Bolton from Plymouth. Hello Tom, are you there? I am, yeah. Yeah, right Tom. And um, I'll, just, I'll just let everybody know what the, what the deadlines are and, and so on. But, um, so the deadline for the Moth Poetry Competition is the 30th of September at midnight and all the details for that um, anybody of any age can enter one poem per person and all those sorts of things um, is on our website and we're hoping to then choose 10 of the um, I don't want to necessarily say best but 10 of the most interesting to to um, take part in a poetry slam in November November the 12th there'll be more information about that as we go on and we'll have three judges and there are some lovely prizes we've got these big activity packs to do with moths there's even a little bit of money for the the one that wins that slam on the night um but tom you've you've um you've been inspired by this as well haven't you yeah yeah i was um i was talking to jenny and um i kind of read up on the watch moths um, things that had happened so far and uh, kind of got inspired by reading about moss and learning a bit more about their kind of how they use their wings to uh, create and generate warmth um, and I thought I could kind of see the the link to to energy usage and and I'm kind of thinking about our impact and ended up crafting and writing a, a piece for for watch moss yes. um, and then I sent it to my friend Dan who's been um a long time collaborator with me we did um when i got my um, laureate ship in 2016 um we had a, a folklore show on on stage at the athenaeum and um you know we've done various other projects and we ended up he put some music to the piece and from there we've kind of ended up forming a little duo um, and have continued doing it so um yeah it was really great to to kind of be inspired not only just for the piece the poem but also kind of uh, artistically and creatively as well great that's 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 amazing and and i have actually i've seen the videos and um i think it's fantastic we we will show them in a second but um can you see can you see other work coming out of this then this it developing further? yeah yeah well i mean especially after watching the small things as well <laughs> as a little um there's a, ticking going on already in my head um with some of the different types of moths and i think that's the thing is once you find a a good image especially one maybe like moss that you wouldn't necessarily see used in in poetry more than just referring to a moth um that's when you start to find a really good sequence of mm. pieces and i've been doing a lot of sequence writing recently not just for the songs but you know for my next collection um and i, and I could see, i could see it, quite a few coming from that especially linking to climate change energy and the environmental impacts um, I think it's all well, especially with the history that's there with the decline in moth numbers from the 60s as uh, I think it was Richard was saying I think you, you've got a lot of imagery there that you could you could delve into yeah great thank you well um, we have two small films uh, to show you well three including so so but the next one is actually Jenny's daughter who was inspired enough to write a very short um, little poem and we're going to see that and then we're going to see your your one afterwards and I we, we wanted to kind of um, uh, demonstrate the the range of, of poetry that we would have going on in here um, and my daughter Erin she's she's eight next week and she's she's quite a, um, a quiet little girl and doesn't particularly enjoy uh, reading and writing at school and, and we were talking about her doing some writing over the, the holidays um, and she said mummy I think I'd like to write about the moths you keep saying about it's clearly I've been going on about moths um, so uh, this is what she came up with and I'm really hoping that this time 
I'm not going to have a, a terrified look on my face as I press <laughs> Hopefully the right thing shares. Let's give this a go. The moth. Moth, moth, and how you fly gently in the sky. Are you looking for the moon? It will come back soon. Over oh, how you fly gently in the sky. Well done. You, the relief for me that um <laughs> uh, people like Tom. So have you got the have you got Tom's one? We just uh oh look, we've got another message here. I keep your keep your um communications going. So I can see there's been one from Gareth about lace wings. So just keep going. Apparently Zoom has kicked Jenny out. No, no, now I'm suddenly back in again. Zoom is doing something very odd this morning. I think it's just just giving me a bit of a um, a tester here to see how yeah. awake I am this morning. Yeah. It told me it had kicked it out and kicked me out and all of a sudden I was back again. So um, I'm now okay. hearing Tom's film. Well, Tom and Dan and uh, Chloe's as well. So um, we're going to see this see this film, um, and then afterwards we'll be hearing a little bit more about the artwork that's in there. From egg to caterpillar and chrysalis that great precipice of change locked in and dormant does it dream would it imagine a life where it consumes less calories that mess of excess parts shed and the nectar of the sun sampled when it emerges from this revelation, it will heat itself, a vibration of blades. Radiant energy to warm, generated naturally. Do not fear transition. It is said that moths hold the memories of the days spent before. Aversion to that which is toxic can be retained. Great, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thanks. Yeah, and um, at the end of the show this morning, we're going to sh um, broadcast the other film that we have from the group. And good luck with your writing. Um, we're we're going to be working together, I'm sure, into the future. Yes. So we'll, yeah. We'll uh, we'll bring you on again, maybe. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. And Chloe has been doing these um, oak gall link uh, images that we've used yeah. with Tom's poem. But Jenny has. Where's uh, the Chloe is going to show us a bit more about making those because anyone can have a go at making moth images like the ones that's that right the ones what, that what i was hoping to do was to develop a technique using my the oak gall ink that i made from the oak tree that's just outside of my house and i wanted to make a a uh, creative process that would be accessible to anyone that would give a sense of that um, reveal that we get when we're looking at moths and so, um, this um, very simple process um, is going to be demonstrated by my kids for your pleasure. and this is our little friend here um <laughs> so we're just what's your little friend called who's little bigger friend. than you 
<laughs> Professor X. Because <laughs> he looks like young Charles Xavier. Okay. The hand signal. <laughs> what um? So what are you going to be doing? Um, I've got the black spot. Um, so we're going to be doing making moths that look exactly the same. Can you show what you mean? So, what I mean is, ah, uh, like, yeah, Let's this kind of that. stuff. Do you see that spy? The black spot. Okay, how do you okay. do it? Show, show Professor X how you do it. No, look. No. What am I doing? So you fold this. Okay. Just down, down, down like the length, yep. or just or that the way. way. That way. That way. All right, let's go. He's also called Xavier. So, are you all gonna do this, or are you just getting okay. Zav to do it? So, Zav. Yes. What you do is, yep, once you once you folded it, um, open it up. Put it on the table. Mm -hmm. Get one of these from one side. Um, half half of them off. Half them off from one side. Okay. They were actually using a moth book originally to help them figure out what they wanted to draw. This isn't my best one. It's going to look better when it comes out. The cats. Felix, are you drawing on your hands instead of on the paper? <laughs> Maybe you can do a moth on your hands instead of on the paper. I'll do it on the other hand, because yeah. on this one it's black spot. Well, I was thinking maybe you could print them together. Okay. Okay, I've done mine. And you're done. I've got to wash my hands. Fold it like this. Fold it. Make it so that... Fold it for quite a long time. Fold it like as hard as you can. Okay, so look, open it. And what have you got? Beautiful. As your that's like a millionth one I've ever done. Not quite so pretty. Yeah. That's actually quite good. Felix, have you got any to show or are you a hand? My brother just did this baby. He didn't. Uh, hey! Oh, a little bit too. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah. Are you going to add some more? Just finish, finish the line. Hey, right, if you ever get a girlfriend, now. turn it upside down. Jeez, what do you get if you turn it upside down? You get a heart. Very nice. Okay, can you say bye? This is like crazy. This like, isn't really a moth. I'll show you when my moth is finished. Okay. Bye. 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 <laughs> Fabulous. There was a question in the comments about what paper I was using and I was basically just using um, watercolour paper that I had um, stacked at the back of a cupboard and hadn't used for a few years and cut it up to use. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chloe. So we're having another lovely full morning of real moths, poetry about moths and some um, art. So and using oak gall ink. I've still got my, I've got a little pot here that I, is waiting for more moths to be made. I think I feel like doing some of those foldy ones on my hands. Um, now, uh, we Chloe has had the moth trap set up in the bathroom and Dave has had the flat pack uh, moth trap 
out and this has resulted in quite a lot of interesting well we love all moths so interesting moths and i'm hoping that we'll play one or two little videos of what we've found and i'm hoping that um john are you there john john can help us Hello, yeah great I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying my best. Yeah. <laughs> help us identify them um and rich and simon as well chip in but we just have a look at what we've uh, we're going to see the boys finding the moths and then we're going to see various moths in a, in a slideshow which, which people have found in the Dave's ones and in the bathroom. So please everybody chip in as they want to when they see things. And please keep your fingers crossed for the technology working again. Here we go. Yes, okay. And if it, if, well, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> No, let's try again. Let's come out there. Now, last night we had tons of little videos, and they they were they were working all right. And so it's just the the technology occasionally plays up, doesn't it? It does. Just as I think I've got it sorted. We've got yeah. two dozy boys this morning, which I think might be about where my laptop is at at the moment. I did restart no it last night. But it doesn't appear to have... Here we go. Um, we've run out of And we're gonna see how many moths we've caught. Come on. <laughs> he just went to sleep back outside the door. <laughs> So we ended up finding quite a lot of moths um, and um, unfortunately because my camera skills are not that great um, <laughs> I um, kept finding them and then they kept flying away but we've got some pictures afterwards which might be a bit easier for you to see. Um, we managed to get all sorts of little flies all over the screen, all over the ceiling and um, this was this was one of our favourites. I um, have a slightly better photo of it. it. I couldn't give you the sense of the yellowness of that one. It was really a yellow one. You're a little sneaky. That was a brimstone, and that's a, a garden carpet. Oh, a garden carpet. That's and this is the moment where. Um, we drop the phone in the bath. Fortunately, there's no water in the bath at the time. <laughs> and then, I love uh, this is Hector sharing one of his tips. Really, really nice to see if they're like under the anything. And I moved to a Dalek. There was. I've done that before, and there was one too. After that a rustic, um, and that looks like a square spot rustic that one the other one I'm not sure about it could be a vines rustic or that's definitely a, a looks like a square spot rustic I think. or maybe a I can't uh, there's so many aren't there yeah so What do you think? Which one's your favourite one today? Oh yeah, is that a plume, John? Yeah, that's a, that looks like a common plume as well that uh, Richard showed us earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Feed, the caterpillar feeds on bindweed, so if you've got bindweed around, you'll, you'll find oh. that one. Oh, 
We don't really have it. Well, there's a park outside our house, so there's quite a few different plants that um that we just have a bit of concrete. So this was this was my favourite one. That's again, that's the that's the lime speck pug which Richard showed us earlier, the yeah. bird poo imitator. <laughs> yes, I love it. They're beautiful. Aren't they? <laughs> that's a little uh, crane fly of some species. Yeah. Uh, the brimstone and there's the plume moth again quite beautiful and there's a garden carpet we have three garden carpets in the bathroom a, uh, oh, what's his name? it's a type of wave moth a malane wave another uh, similar That's a willow beauty. Um, what was that? A willow, willow beauty. It's one that it's featured a few times in the in the uh, moths. So yeah. Far. Uh, quite a common moth. Lovely uh, bark. Um, mm. That's another yeah. garden carpet. Yeah. Sorry, the photographic challenge is a bit tricky. There's the, the <laughs> Malayan wave again. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you Got very it. much for sharing yeah. what they well, are. That's uh, probably a vines rustic. Think. So and Richard had a vines rustic, didn't he? In his yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that is. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Lovely, thank you. Hmm. And and um, now we look at what Dave found in his moth trap. Just loading it. See what there is. After saying that, I, I kind of want to go into a sort of a David Bellamy. Mm. So, oh, that was very lovely in the bathroom, and all the plants and the moths coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hi, back again this morning, and it's absolutely pouring down outside, so I've, I've had to bring the moth trap under cover. Um, but what, what I will do is to. Uh, leave it back up into close by to where I left the trap open last night um, just to let any critters back out um, because I'm, I'm not entirely sure what's the best way of, of doing it but uh, certainly at the moment it is it's just so very wet out there um, but we seem to have success to a degree we, we've got a nice little yellow fellow there uh, hopefully somebody can let us know what it is I'm afraid I don't know any more whatsoever um, but we certainly get a lot of micro moths and this cute little chap here I don't know if you can see it I'll try and take a macro photograph in a minute um, but we certainly seem to get a lot of those um, and there's this little fella here and I'm kind of hoping that in amongst the packaging I, I didn't have many um, egg boxes but th this Oh, one just flew out. Um, this seems to work quite well. Um, it's just packaging material. Um, we've got a little fella there. Sorry, this is not very professional, but uh, it's, as I say, it's more proof of concept, really. Um, so you can see that there's a few, another little micro moth that has just decided to land on me. He doesn't seem to be biting, so I'm happy with that. And we've got another little fella down here. Uh, if I can just have a quick look there. So, yeah, not not masses. There's quite a few little fleas and flies and critters in the box. And uh, oh, there's another one just thrown off. I'm actually oh, there's another cute white chrome off there with one next to it um, so yeah not not totally disappointed there's a few curled up by the looks of it um, no big big moths but uh, you know it's early days 
Thank you. Oh, yeah, well done. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. It, it was really good fun, but I loved that one. He he hung about in our conservatory. I, I was actually open in the conservatory, and a lot of them hang about all day until the evening. We we left the doors open, and uh, they they've gradually all migrated. But we loved this fella. I, I don't. Sorry, what was? He's a brimstone, Mark. He was a brimstone. Double stripe pug, Mark. Yeah, that's a double striped pug moth. Yeah, I, I was just saying it, it, it's amazing when you actually see the moths up really close to see the patterns and the colours. That I, I've just never noticed it before. It's just just a complete eye opener. Mm. But it's brilliant. Thank you, Dave. And Thank you. Uh, don't worry about not being professional. None of us are. <laughs> well, one or two moth experts are at there. Mothers, but <laughs> thank you. And um, John, yes, um, you've you've been doing a lot of your um, mothing and uh, researching and surveying over the last few weeks. In the last yeah. month, has there been anything, any particular stories? Oh, well, that's only what I was going to show you, actually. Um, yeah. I'm glad I had time for this. Uh, yes, now, the world's smallest moth lives in Devon. And if you, if you look in there, you probably can't really see much. But if you look there, there's a little red splodge. Yes. Leaf, and maybe it's in focus there. And if you look very closely under a lens, uh, you can see it's actually like a tiny little Catherine wheel. And that is the larva of a tiny, tiny moth, which eats the leaf, but it only eats eating the two layers of the leaf so it actually makes a leaf mine so it's an absolutely minuscule moth and to demonstrate this I've got just by chance I have a specimen of the largest moth in the world which is the giant atlas moth and uh, I'll show you that there we go so it has a you see in my hand there it's an enormous moth this lives down in Borneo and places like that uh, the smallest moth in the world uh, at the very end of that bit of paper there I can see it's about three millimetres so you can see it wouldn't even be like the tip of its antennae the smallest moth uh, right. compared to this so that really shows the enormous diversity in size of moths they've all probably all evolved from a common ancestor millions of years ago but they produce these massive uh, diversity of forms so I love to see one of these things flapping around well you can sometimes in uh, butterfly houses an enormous great moth like this uh, to a tiny moth which you'd never find in fact i've never seen the moth i've only seen these little mines in the leaves so you know it's there wow thank you that's a really it's a really nice uh nice thing to think about the diversity you know that variety that exists and uh is is so special isn't it it's it's what um all, the whole ecology of the planet <laughs> Uh, has evolved over those millions of years and moths are a fantastic illustrator of that. Oh yes, yeah. yeah they've yeah. been on the land masses as the land masses have moved apart, so they've been around for a very long time. So yeah. they've, uh, they've actually moved, I mean, ended up where they are today, but at one point of course they were fully on, on Gondwana land or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By that fact that they've actually moved as the land, which is something you know, almost inconceivable to us. Uh, that the, you know, the land's moving apart slowly or the, the different continents are and, and these moths and other insects and animals were there on those uh, bits of man and some of them which can't fly that well they actually move with them and they're still there. Yeah brilliant thank so, you. Um, Sarah was just asking which tree leaves do the tiny ones mine? Oh well, all sorts of ones I mean the very common one you can find if you look on bramble leaves you'll find one they haven't got English names uh, one called stigmella or rella it's a little nepticulid moth and if you look on bramble leaves you'll find a wiggly gallery it's called and if you look at it under a lens you'll in fact you can as you've looked really closely up, up with a high power lens you can see the egg of the moth laid under usually underneath I think and then if you follow it you can see the trail of the larva as it eats and leaves its poo in a characteristic a uh, line called it a, a gallery and uh, and then eventually the caterpillar will leave the mine at the end so you can see a little slip where it's um, left the mine sometimes you can find them with the caterpillars in uh, they're quite common there's loads of leaf miners there's a website called uk leaf miner moths have a look at that 
Um, there's a whole world, I and mean, it's not just moths as well, there are other flies and other insects which mine plants. So most of the insects in Britain are actually tiny. You know, there's 20, you know, 25,000 species of insects in Britain, uh, but most of them, you know, you, they're so small that you really never notice them. Yeah, thank you. Well, and okay. um, I think we'll just whiz back to Simon because we left him, left him in the woods. So thank you, John, and we'll whiz back to him and just say hello to him. And then we, it is just after nine, so we should um, finish in a second. But are you there, Simon? I am. I'll just do a very, very quick whiz round some remaining moths, because one of the ones I didn't mention, mm. oh, uh, let's just reverse my screen. Um, that I caught a lot of, not surprisingly, because they feed on ash, is this uh, dusky thorn here. You can see how they rest with their wings in a sort of characteristic uh, V-shape. It's not focusing very well. But we, 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 get, we get the, the V-shape. Yeah, good. And uh, so the angle shades went and had a flight. I tried to mount it on a, 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 a I tried to mount it on that log there, which is something does expertly. It, it did stay there for a little while, but then it's flown off, and you might just be able to see it just here, resting on this ash. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can. Yes. So nice to see it natural habitat. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll just go back to the green carpet if it's still there because that one flew and rested on the holly, uh, sorry, the ivy here. Just see how they are because can you see it underneath there? Oh, yeah. And see how the colours blend rather nicely against the ivy, but of course, um, usually it would be resting on a tree trunk a lichen encrusted tree trunk and, and it would just blend in completely imperceptibly. Well spotted. <laughs> I guess that's probably all we've got time for. Yes, well thank you for, did, did you actually camp overnight in the woods or did you leave it and then go back again? I didn't, I didn't. My friend, uh, he's also called Simon, he's left me a huge pile of wood and he did say uh, if I wanted a fire then uh, I was welcome to it but no I didn't fancy that really with the mm. rain. <laughs> no, no well um, thanks for setting up in a new place and um, that is now the end of the Watch Moth 3, uh, the morning session and we are really looking forward to the next one, which is going to be at the end of September. Uh, Jenny here is showing you our website and how to how to find out about it and to book. We're we're trying a system this time of booking the evening and the morning as two separate things, so that. Um, we will see whether that works better in terms of uh, numbers and people remembering to come in the morning, understanding it's like a double bill. So um, it's at the end of September and it's at the same time as the Plymouth Arts Weekender. And so we're having a whole Moths to a Flame Jamboree. We're, we're holding watch moths, we're giving away 500 books and 500 packs of moth-based activities. We're setting up an installation, beautiful installation, and uh, there'll be more information about that. We will be sharing on our website and via social media and maybe even uh, television or radio, you never know. So keep your eyes out for that and if you'd like to come it's the 25th, 26th and 27th of September and thank you to all our presenters John and Simon and Richard and Dave and last night Sarah and Tom this morning and I've probably forgotten somebody but um, and, and Chloe and the boys Thank you all very much for taking part this morning and we're going to play out uh, a film 
by the Mandy Moore Band, another uh, poem and tune. And we say goodbye. After so this that. was created by Tom and Dan, following on from vibrations, following on from their, their moth poem that we heard earlier on. Isn't it strange? There is a dead star, as cold as a toad, yet we still perceive its light continues long journeys across the great slab. So, is it really dead? Am I really alive? I was born with a truth as cold as a toad that I will die. If time is simultaneous, then are you merely witnessing my light as it continues? The expanding giant burning through moments, fusing the air and ideas, producing elements until that implosion. Stars are formed in nebulas. everyone for watching and we look Thanks. forward to seeing you at the end of September. Bye bye. Okay, bye. Bye bye. Bye, bye. bye everybody. See you next month. Bye. bye.